Welcome to Behind the Scenes. I'm your host, Hector Montalvo. This show is dedicated to asking tough questions for you, the viewers. We bring you their responses and we let you decide. Joining us here today at our MCTV studio is no other than the mayor for the city of Methuen, the Honorable Mayor Bill Manzi. Welcome to the show, Mr. Thank Mayor. Thank you for having me, Hector. The couch feels very comfortable. I'm glad you enjoyed it, <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, for those people that are watching us today, um, tell us a little bit about Mayor Manzi. Well, I am uh, serving my third term as mayor. Uh, prior to that, I had served, uh, I don't know how many terms on the city council, but uh, going back to 1992, uh, with multiple terms as uh, city council president, uh, and a lifelong Methuen resident, uh, graduate of Holy Rosary uh, Grammar School, Central Catholic High School, University of Massachusetts at Amherst, uh, and the University of Massachusetts at Lowell. Right. Mr. Mayor, you were quoted uh, when you were dealing with the uh, city budget, uh, you were quoted as saying that the city councilors may have ha uh, held an illegal meeting uh, that should have been open to the public. Moving forward, can you tell us what steps are you taking or have taken to ensure that the public meeting laws are not violated? I think that um, in terms of that, the mayor has limited ability. Uh, the, the specific meeting that you're referring to uh, was a budget meeting in which the city council went into executive session and I actually was asked to leave the meeting. Now, I, I don't have any ability um, beyond uh, um, giving my input uh, uh, to the council uh, as to what they do with that. But uh, the long and the short of it is, I don't know how familiar you are with it, but the law has changed somewhat. The enforcing authority uh, on that has just flipped over from the local DAs to the Attorney General, uh, and they're promulgating some new rules and regulations, and I hope that um, the promulgation of those new rules through the Attorney General's office will help all municipalities um, to, I think, be better in tune with what's appropriate for executive session, what's appropriate uh, for uh, those types of um, uh, meetings, and everything else which should be obviously uh, open to the public. Now you're uh, also a chair, uh, the chair of the uh, school committee, is that correct? Yes. Um, what, uh, have, what are the issues in regarding to the, uh, the committee as far as, or the school administration as far as being open and transparent? Well, I, I think that um, you see, to go back to your original question about executive session, you, you generally see the school committee, uh, not every meeting, but uh, frequently at the end of meetings go into executive session. Now, those uh, I think I, I would have more control over as the chairman of, of the body itself. We go in for uh, purposes of litigation uh, and or purposes of discussing uh, collective bargaining approaches, uh, negotiations, and those are the only things that we go into executive session to discuss. Uh, keep in mind that um, the statute, the state statute, allows you to go in for those for the obvious reasons. But other than that, I, I think that uh, the committee itself uh, tries to do its business uh, in an open manner uh, and uh, transparent to the public. And, and I, I think that that is a key thing, whether it be city council, school committee, uh, or the administrations of either the school or the city. Now, Mr. Mayor, how, uh, we understand that Lawrence contributes 0% of their educational funding. How much does the city of Methuen contribute to the Lawrence education? Well, I, I think it's pretty difficult to answer that, uh, except to say that uh, Lawrence uh, does get 100% uh, of their school funding from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. How that would be broken out amongst Methuen taxpayers, it's difficult to say. But suffice to say that um, Lawrence uh, is really, when you cut down to the chase, um, even with notwithstanding the current difficulties, is essentially a ward of the state. Uh, the second part of the, of the equation is the city budget in Lawrence, which I don't have the exact number, but the city budget is probably in the 60 to 70 percent state funded um, range. So 100 percent of the schools, 60 to 70 percent of, of the city budget, uh, obviously, the, um, the city of Lawrence will never be in a position where they're going to be able to fully fund their own operations. And the question then for us as residents of the Commonwealth is to what extent uh, do, we, do we believe that, that uh, Lawrence needs that outside help and, and what level of help that should be. 
I appreciate that. Mr. Mayor, some, some people may say that under the current school administration, um, parents are labeled as difficult parents when trying to go in and uh, discuss issues regarding their children's education. Should a parent be labeled uh, as difficult under any administration? No, I, I think that um, human beings, being human beings, um, sometimes you, you see um, uh, push and tug on those types of issues. School issues, as you know, uh, sometimes can be difficult issues for parents. And um, I think to go to the core of your question, I don't think when parents are fighting for their children, um, even if they don't know exactly all the rules and regulations, you, you have to understand it's a little different, uh, I believe, with, with parents and children. When they're fighting for their kids, when they're fighting to get something for their kids that they think that their children need, um, I think that we have to really take a step back and say that that's not a problem. We need to work with them to, to try and get the best result for the children. And so I, I personally, even when um, parents may have been a little tough, I don't look at that as the same way as I, I would look at maybe you being tough on me uh, in a conversation about a public policy issue. I think it's a little bit different and it ought to be treated differently because we all know how we feel about our kids. Um, I have two kids uh, uh, going through uh, school now, so uh, when it comes to that, I think you really, really, really have to make an extra effort to say, okay, um, you know, we got to work a little harder and go that extra yard. Now, you're credited for uh, uh, working with the state legislators that we have currently in office now in regards to the school funding to open up the new, rebuilt the, the high school. Can you tell us how the process is going? How, uh, w how far are we into this? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there is a special city council meeting Tuesday night. Uh, the MSBA, uh, Massachusetts School Building Authority, uh, has gotten us the uh, final leg of the uh, uh, process, which is the project finance agreement. Uh, and that contains all of the numbers in contract form uh, that we had talked about when we discussed how we would finance the high school. So uh, City Council should approve that Tuesday night in light of the fact that they approved the uh, finance plan 68.84% uh, for the city uh, and uh, with a cap of uh, let's say 66 million to use round numbers. So uh, it's a great finance deal I think for the city, uh, something that we need to do at the high school and uh, we're very grateful to the Massachusetts School Building Authority and the legislators uh, who were effective in, in helping us deal with them. Now, the Charter Commission, um, which you're not a part of, the Charter Commission uh, had a, a hearing yesterday where term limits were, were dis the discussion. Are you in favor of allowing, instead of having government appoint a person to a specific, uh, specific uh, department, what is your take on the people electing, let's say, a fire police, a fire chief, a police chief, or I, even a school superintendent? Yeah, I, I, you know, I know that there's been some talk of uh, moving more towards a town form, for example, electing planning board. I, I, it's the first I've heard of potentially looking at, for example, electing a fire chief. I would probably not be in favor of that and would say that um, you would need to pick um, those types of staff positions based on somebody that's had life experience in it. We just, within the past year, uh, named Steve Buett as the fire chief. He succeeded Cliff Gallant, uh, a lifetime resident of Methuen, but also, I think, more importantly, uh, well-versed in fire suppression, uh, the management of a fire department um, having grown through the system. So, no, I don't think so. Uh, and honestly, even though you didn't ask, I probably would say no to elected boards as well. I, I don't see that as productive. Uh, I think it's more conducive towards a smaller community. Methuen is growing uh, and is, is not a town anymore. It's a city form of government, uh, 45,000 people. And so I, I think that, you know, I know there's differences on that, but I, I favor uh, obviously being a mayor, uh, mayoral appointments to those boards. Now, the city of Bethune has balanced their budget, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, 
I understand that Congress just passed a $10 billion educational job funding uh, that's expected to bring $130 million going back into the state. 76, 76 million of those dollars will go to restore jobs that were already lost in the last um, rounds. My question to you, sir, is if the budget is balanced, do we really need to take that money? Well, uh, the budget is balanced, uh, but the budget uh, on the school side, for example, was balanced, um, at least in part, by laying off some teachers. I think the idea of the federal stimulus money, um, which was actually $26 billion, um, was to try to go and give uh, struggling municipalities, even like Lawrence, um, I think the idea there was to take an injection, a one-time injection uh, of federal money and allow some municipalities to hire back. So um, the budget, no question, is balanced. Uh, the, the, the idea here is, even on the education side, if you laid off 10 teachers and your class sizes have inched up somewhat, do you think it would be appropriate to take that money and strictly rehire the 10 teachers? Now, Having said all that, uh, there was a story in yesterday's New York Times, I haven't had time to do it yet, but I'll post it on your Facebook page, and it talked about many cities in the United States that are looking at the money and maybe taking it and actually not restoring teachers, but utilizing for other educational means. I'm not quite sure that that's allowed under the legislation, but my, my take on it would be that if we could put back teachers in particular, I, I think it would be productive and I would recommend taking it on a one-time basis. Now, wouldn't that, wouldn't that be rewarding uh, the union that were supposed to represent these particular teachers? Are we rewarding them by doing that? Well, I, I, I think the, the short answer is yes, the political answer is yes, you would or you wouldn't be punishing them for, for not having given contract concessions. A couple of things on that. Um, you look at it and um, I felt that the, the union ought to have given back and I, I felt that they should have come to the table and helped the city more than they did. They didn't feel that way, um, but when we look at what we would like to do for the city and more importantly for, for the children and the educational piece where we talk about classroom sizes, I think it needs to be considered notwithstanding uh, the stand of the teachers union. Now, Mr. Mayor, uh the city has stated that they were going to appeal the decision of a uh, former police chief. Has that been done yet? No, it will be done next it week. It will. Um, and basically, so currently, come October 1st, we would be having two chief of police no, versus one? No, that's not uh, correct. We, we, uh, um, we would ask the court to uh, um, hold that decision until such time as judicial review is completed. Um, but even were that not to happen, we would only have one chief um, under the civil service ruling. Um, th the return chief would be the chief and the existing chief would be rolled back uh, to civil service captain. And how open uh, and transparent is Manzi's administration in general with all departments? I think that, um, look, you know, I, there's always critics, um, and I think that uh, um, sometimes the critics actually are right. I mean, you, you need to uh, listen uh, and try and change and, and do good things in terms of openness and transparency, but when I came in um, four plus years ago, uh, the city website was quite honestly an abomination. Um, no criticism meant it just was not kept up. Uh, since I've been in, we have won the uh, Common Cause Open Government Award. We saw e that. Yeah, each and every year. Um, now, c could the website be better and do uh, new, improved things? Yes. But we are striving to, in my administration, uh, answer FOIA requests quickly. Uh, if we can do it before the statutory period, we try to do it. Uh, I think that my philosophy is, is if you don't have anything to hide, just let it out. Uh, and that honestly goes for a uh, political friend uh, or political foe, um, because at the end of the day, you have to follow the law. So uh, we've done our best. I can't tell you that we've been perfect, uh, but we, we do strive, and it is an important uh, piece of my administration, and uh, I think the Common Cause Award uh, is, is, shows you that we went in 
uh, philosophically with that bent. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, this question here, I, I, know, I know what the definition to me means, but I'm kind of curious to know what, it, what does the definition of status quo would mean to you? I think status quo, uh, of course, means a little, uh, uh, a little something different to everybody. But in politics, I think that status quo uh, isn't just about the people that are there. I mean, status quo, I think, would be, let's say, if we, uh, in the next election cycle, elected everybody to the, the, the same people. I guess the voters would have stayed with the status quo. Um, but the status quo goes beyond people. I think the status quo is something that, um, for people that, that run for office, sometimes it's easier, Hector, to do nothing. And when I say do nothing, I don't mean literally do nothing, but if you have a hard decision and you can avoid it, put it off to another day, you put it off to another day. That's the status quo. If you don't want to make any waves because you know a decision might disaffect uh, a good section of the population, somebody might be mad, you say, you know what, why don't we put that off till next year? That's the status quo. Um, so I think that the way the situation is, not just in Methuen, but uh, honestly throughout the country, um, status quo politicians um, always rule the roost, and that is a fact. At, the, at this point we're in in our history, status quo is not going to cut it. You need, you need to change, you need to move, and you need to make decisions that might get you turned out of office. And that's a fact, uh, whether it be at the federal level, state level, and even at the local level. So I've always been somebody that um, people accuse me of breaking a few eggs while I'm in the office. I'm not afraid to make a decision, but I think more importantly, uh, that's what status quo means to me. Uh, and I think we need to sort of jar the status quo maybe a little bit here uh, in the United States and, and get to uh, decisions that, that may be a controversial but are needed. Now, the Constitution says that we, the people, are government, basically, and government works for the people. How do you see government working today in general? Is it working for the, to enhance the people? Is it working to enhance the government in general? I, I think that... Um, Honestly, at the federal level, let's start at the federal level, um, notwithstanding the fact that you have some good people, I think that what we just talked about, uh, the status quo in Washington, um, unfortunately, is prevailing. There have been some substantive changes made under President Obama, but I think in the areas that are critical to our people, uh, and by our people I mean the, the people on the street that, that are literally at 15% unemployment, um, we're not seeing positive changes for those folks. The United States has lost its manufacturing base. Uh, our middle class, I think we're in danger of losing. And so, yeah, there are some good things happening. Yes, there have been some changes made, I think, uh, with regard to financial reform that, that are positive, uh, and I think that um, we need more of that. But I still see government in Washington um, working um, not as much uh, from Main Street as they should be working and still tilted a little bit too much uh, towards Wall Street. What about state and local I think level? State, state is, uh, you know, Mass I'm more familiar with Massachusetts obviously and I think Massachusetts has done some, um, ha has had a pretty good legislative session. Um, having said that, uh, I think there's some criticism that I would make. Uh, and, you know, I, I tell this to my uh, uh, friends in the legislative delegation, uh, we need further reform of some of the rules governing municipalities, uh, primarily in my case, I've been an advocate for what they call pl municipal plan design, which would lower the cost for municipal taxpayers uh, and impact our ability to give good health care to our employees, but do so at a lesser cost. The state won't let us. Uh, there are a number of things like that where I think reform needs to take a further step. It's one of those things that uh, there are intractable uh, positions and, you know, uh, it, it's pretty fashionable these days to whack the unions around. I do it plenty myself. So um, it might be, seem funny coming from me, but unions have members, uh, members vote, members have a right to be heard even if you don't agree with them. 
uh, and this is what we have. We have a democracy. So mayors, governors, and presidents aren't dictators. We can say what we think ought to happen, and we, ought, we can present it, but they have a right as well. And that, that clash has been, I think, too much in their favor and not enough in, in, in favor of the taxpayers. But it's, a, it's an evolving process. So the legislature has done some good things. Uh, I think they need to do more in the next session, and I hope that they do. Now, going back to the school for a second, I understand that they teach civics. I mean, it's a requirement uh, for Chapter 70 funds or, or anything like that. Um, in regards to that portion of it, how can we get the children in the high school level more, more involved in government, per se? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, it really is a, a fabulous question because... What, what we see um, throughout the country is younger people coming out um, and not only not knowing anything about it, but honestly not participating, not being interested. Um, and I, I'm not quite sure what the answer is because what our curriculum now is not piquing interest in government. So if that's the standard by which you judge the curriculum, and I'm not saying it is entirely, but obviously we're not getting it done. Uh, kids are coming out and honestly, um, you know, not, not all kids, but uh, I look at my kids and when I was in the eighth grade, I would read the New York newspapers. My father got them, but I would read them. And I see my son and my daughter and they're barely picking up the newspaper and I still yell at them about it. They ought to be reading it, but I think it's uh, something where they get their news now from the internet um, they do it in different ways, and I'm looking at it, and I just don't see the interest there. And I think the participation levels are so low amongst young people that it's so disheartening that I'm not quite sure what the answer is. But I, need, I think that that's where we're losing the fight, is right where you just cited. Right, and I, and I tend to agree with that only because uh, we built the government that we have, basically. And if people are not involved in the government, then basically... You know, they've given up. They, they don't have no reason to complain. Uh, moving forward, I'd like to see um, some type of program within the school system in every school district uh, that will teach children to get involved more in politics because 10, 15 years will go by and, you know. I, I think, you know, there were, there were some, probably some more complicated answers, but um, one of the things that, that I really enjoy doing as mayor, it's one of the, the joys I've had is I have a lot of friends that are teachers and I go to the schools. Now I think there ought to be more of that in, in the civics program and I don't just mean the mayor. I think that um, elected officials ought to spend time going in but not just going in and handing out candy. I think that they ought to be going in and talking about things that are of interest. I think that uh, mayors ought to go back and teach a civics class. I think governors ought to spend more time in classrooms. Now, we're all busy people. We can't be teachers full time. But I think as part of my job, I've always considered it to be a priority. Uh, we bring uh, students up every year at the end of the school year. And um, instead of going through really uh, a typical uh, mayoral presentation of 10 minutes where you really don't do anything. I try to spend more time and open it up for questions and spend a good 30 minutes with each class. And I can't tell you that I'm going to peak interest in government, but I, I, I think that it helps. And it would be also helpful if other local electeds uh, came in and did more work um, in the classroom. And, and I think it just helps we know who the mayor is now. Um, I tell you, I go out and I have more kids come up to me and say, that's the mayor. And I actually was up at City Hall and I asked him a question. You know, my it's interesting because my eight-year-old daughter, Helena, who wanted me to ask, ask you basically, how fun is it to be a mayor? I, you know, when you do things like that, it's a lot of fun. Uh, when you are stuck in the, in the budget, and the last budget session maybe uh, was one of the worst in terms of enjoyment. Um, you, you know, when you, when you uh, have to hand out pink slips, that's not fun. Uh, and people don't get into government to, um, you know, make those types of decisions. But those are decisions that need to be made sometimes. So it's not always fun. Um, I myself uh, grew up as a political science major. So I'm in the field that I love. I'm one of those lucky people. 
And so going to work even on a day when I might have things on the agenda that I don't really like, I still enjoy it. So it's up to the individual. It is. Just want to quickly state that if you have a question that you want us to ask your legal officials or you're from your government, drop us an email at uh, the Hector Montalvo Show at yahoo.com. You can also visit our website at behindthescenes.weebly.com. Mr. Mayor, what is next for the city of Methuen? Well, I think that uh, like all municipalities, there are great challenges uh, in the financial uh, area. And, you know, I'm fond of saying, Hector, that all of our policy um, determinations, all of the things that we want to do, whether it be in education, whether we want to have more recreation programs, uh, whether we want to build a new water plant, they all flow from the financial area. So um, the better off your financial um, uh, foundation is, the more you're able to do on the policy front. So it's always been my view that you need that solid foundation for all cities and towns. There have to be changes made at the state level that will allow us more autonomy uh, in determining how we're going to handle our fiscal situation. Uh, we need a, a stronger partnership with the state uh, relative to revenue sharing and local aid. Uh, local government is where the rubber meets the road and you know we tease the senators and the reps about that but honestly we pick up your garbage we uh, provide your schools we do the things that day to day I believe make the most impact on on your life and I think you, we're the first ones you call whether it be a city council or a mayor uh, so I'm fond of saying that that local government is where it's at uh, if you really want to learn about government, come into local government, even as a school committee member, city councilor. And I believe that, that the financial challenges are going to consume all of us unless real, real change is made and the status quo is shaken. Well, so it's fair to say that every time we drive by and we see you coming out of one of the schools, you were basically speaking with the children in the schools. Yeah, I, I, I would hope that it's not always the case, but I, I make uh, more of a habit of it than, than you would think. And also having them come to the Great Hall. And the Great Hall, uh, we have second graders, uh, fourth graders, and sixth graders, and we do it frequently. We've also brought in uh, a great uh, group has been the adult education group. Um, Shirley Callan's group um, and they have been wonderful uh, they come up every year and they are interested in government and I'm proud to say that um, the first year they came up to see me um, we had some uh, newly minted citizens and I asked them how many of you are registered to vote and um, there was one that was not but she quickly got registered and every year she comes up and says I just want to tell you that if you didn't shame me into it I, I wouldn't be registered. So. <laughs> Mr. Mayor we have uh, about 15 seconds left to go. How can the uh, constituents of Methuen reach the mayor? You can reach me uh, at 978-983-8505, the phone number. Um, uh, email me at Bill Manzi with the number one at Comcast.net. Uh, join me on Facebook or get to my blog at www.billmanzi.com and I'll answer any question that you send that way or just give me a call. Well, we'd like to thank you, Mr. Mayor, for coming on our show today. Uh, the Honorable Mayor Manzi from the city of Methuen. You've been watching Behind the Scenes. I am your host, Hector Montalvo. Join us next time when we go behind the scenes to ask the tough questions, bring you their responses, and we let you decide. Thank you for watching.